Today, I'm going to three different Asian restaurants to test out a theory that the most average rated one actually has the best food. In our last video, I visited three of the worst reviewed restaurants in my area to see if they were truly deserving of their stars. Because as we know, Yelp can be pretty unfair. Easiest way to find authentic Chinese food, assuming you're living in a major metropolitan area, is to go on Yelp and look for restaurants with three and a half stars. Exactly three and a half, not three, not four. Three and a half stars is the sweet spot for authentic Chinese food. He basically boils it down to the idea that Asian cultural expectations for service are different. It's not as proactive. They're not going to come up to you. They're not going to just proactively give you refills. You need to flag down the waiters. People on Yelp are insufferable. They're dinging all these restaurants because the service is bad. However, the food balances it out, so you end up at three and a half stars. It's the sweet spot. So since I'm Vietnamese, today I'm going to be checking out three differently rated Vietnamese restaurants in my area to test out this theory. I've got my spy glasses, my Yelp Justice Officer jacket, and my food critic sensibilities. Service seems to be the deciding factor here, so we're going to test that out because I did hear the worse the service in an Asian restaurant, the better the food. So I'm here at the most reviewed Vietnamese restaurant around here with the whopping 5,000 reviews and it has four and a half stars. The only kicker is that it's a Vietnamese Peruvian restaurant so I can see how it can appeal to Vietnamese and non-Vietnamese customers for like more non-traditional dishes. Although there are many great restaurants in the area, we decided to try this place due to the many positive reviews. Our party had the house garlic noodles with filet mignon, the saltado with salmon belly, and the saltado with filet mignon. All the dishes were tasty, but the salmon belly was dry and overcooked. I would definitely recommend the filet mignon instead. The house noodles were rich, but the flavor was good, almost like it was prepared with a fish sauce. The only downfall was that the service was subpar. Supposedly, the worse the service, the better the food. This was not the case. Perhaps they were understaffed. We never got checked on during our meal. The food came out one at a time, and two people didn't get their food for about 15 minutes after two other people got their food, and some were the same order. However, the bill did come quickly. All right, and there's about a 35 to 50 minute wait during lunch. So it did take a good 35 minutes for us to finally be seated. I noticed that every table was full, but once we were seated, Thank they you. were super fast yeah. and accommodating. What do you recommend here? So our saltado is the most popular, and then our house garlic noodles are also pretty popular, and then also the mushroom ribeye. The waitress greeted us right away, and she even had a 10 top right behind us that we're just wrapping up. She's coming, I think. I'm gonna get the shaken salmon with the house garlic noodle. You said I should get the saltado. The saltado with the filet. And then we'll try the pear salad. And then um, the lychee lemonade. Lunch date or a work trip? As busy as this place is and loud, everything comes out pretty fast and the service has been great. Oh wow. Yes. Wow. Thank you. My lunch came out just as fast as my drink, which is so uncommon for restaurants. This is so refreshing and delicious. All right, so let's dig in. This is the shaken salmon saltado. I'm gonna dip it in the sauce. I also ordered this pear salad that looks so refreshing too. About the only thing that's Vietnamese on this whole plate is probably the garlic noodle, if you could even consider that a Vietnamese dish. Definitely very non-traditional. All right, let's try this pear salad. Where's the pear? Oh, the pear's at the bottom. I would have put this on top. Ooh, there's also burrata. You usually see the toppings on top of the lettuce. Maybe it was like an afterthought. Regardless, let's try it. This is so refreshing and delicious. 10 out of 10. It's so tender. 10 out of 10.
This was one of the better meals that I've had in Orange County, and as you can see, we cleaned up. Thank you. That's awesome. It's so good. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Now we're going to walk over to Brodard, where it got the most average reviews at three and a half stars, and this place is iconic. So the reviews here across the board are kind of mixed bag. This one received two stars. Food here is no longer the same as I remembered it. The bun cock, which is their Luna rice cake that came out, was on the colder side and stale. The pickled daikon and carrots had little to no flavor which didn't add much to the wraps. Glad their grilled pork roll was still consistent. At this point, this seemed like the only dish that is synonymous to their brand. The rest of the dish is just an attempt to draw a larger crowd with options that subpar to its main product. But then we have a three star from a month ago. My friend hyped this place up a lot and obviously by the wait outside and knowing how it's always crowded, I was expecting a bit more. There's literally always a line here. I was recommended the Ban Kan Tom Kua and quite honestly just thought it was okay. I was really expecting more from the broth and overall taste of the dish, but it fell short of my expectations. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, anytime a family member or people out of town come in, this is the spot that we hit up and my mom loves this place. They're known for their spring rolls. It's an iconic Vietnamese establishment that everybody comes to when they're in SoCal, Orange County. So I see why the expectations are high. I've had their food before, but I'm gonna try the Luna rice cakes today. And of course, we have to get the spring rolls so I can show you guys. So I'm no stranger to Brodard. I've been there so many times, but this time, as we walked in, there was no line. Can we get a window seat? And so we were seated right away. And as soon as we were seated, someone was ready to take our order. Thank you. Can we get um, four of the pork rolls and then Luna rice cake? Regular beer, coffee. Thank you. So the spring rolls came out even before the coffee that was ordered. They have like an assembly line back there, just people constantly churning out these spring rolls. So they always come out super fast. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And of course, a Vietnamese iced coffee, because that's always a must. Cool. Nice and strong. It's so good. And it's not too sweet, too, which I appreciate, but it's strong. I spy our garlic noodles. Wow. Typical service, they just smack it down. <laughs> it's just, here you go. Hi. And I wanted to compare apples to apples with the garlic noodles, and this looked like the beef saltado that Nate got at Vox Kitchen. And of course, the Luna rice cakes that were in the reviews, and then the famous spring rolls. I'm gonna go for the Luna rice cakes first because that has the most critical reviews saying that it was stale and cold. It's not cold or stale. The shrimp is still piping hot since you can see the steam coming out. They might have had a fluke with theirs. I think mine is quite good and it tastes very similar to what my mom would make at home. So I like it. The meat is tender, but it's also gristly, so it's not like the best cut, I would say. But let's try the garlic noodles. I would say the garlic noodles and the meat is just average. Having come back from Vox Kitchen, this doesn't really compare. <laughs> and finally, what they're known for, the grilled pork spring rolls with the crunchies inside. You get a crunchy meat patty of grilled pork and then the crunchies, which is similar to like the shell of an egg roll that's inside that gives it texture. And then we have all the herbs, cucumber, chive, pickled daikon lettuce, mint, and lettuce. And you get all of that into one bite plus this sauce. It's incredible. So I remembered that one review about the booths being a little dirty, and so I'm inspecting it. Decently clean, I suppose. There's some crumbs, but nothing that can't be wiped off. Wait, nothing sticky. So the pricing wasn't terrible. I just wish that they had the pricing on the menu. Okay, but before we leave, I have to check out their dessert bar because they're actually known for their pastry program. So let's go check it out. So over at their dessert bar, you can find an assortment of French and Vietnamese desserts, a huge array of French macarons and pastries. And then on the other side, you get the classic Vietnamese
Vietnamese desserts like jie, which are cold desserts, and some agar agar. They even have some fusiony Asian pastries that matcha was calling my name. You can bring your family here on a Friday night. You can bring friends from out of town with a crowd of 10, and there's a space for everyone. All right, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna test out this theory on one more place. So now we're at our three-star restaurant. It's a beautifully decorated restaurant with so much potential. It's a shame Yelp does not allow for half stars. They would have gotten a solid three and a half stars for me. The restrooms were immaculate. Can't say the same for most spa eateries. The menu was diverse and they followed our special instructions to a T. I just could not get over the dining experience as we were sitting in front of a windowsill of a dozen dead bees. Basically, they were unhappy with a lot of the insects outside buzzing around, but I don't think that's something that's super controllable. But the one star that they did get said, not impressed with customer service, place was not busy and it was just the two of us. They bring one person's food and had to wait, wait, wait. It's too bad because food is decent, but what's the point of going out together if one person finishes his food and the other does not have her food yet? Very disappointed. All right, but now we're gonna go check out Fuzz Saigon Pearl in the Irvine Spectrum. Come on, guys. So as we were walking in, I noticed the decor and the lanterns on the ceilings, and this place was beautifully decorated. I felt like I was walking into a Vegas-style Vietnamese restaurant. And of course, their menus had photos for reference, so that's always a plus. They have the pork patty rolls, similar to Brodard, so definitely have to try that. And check this out, they also have garlic noodles. Gonna compare apples to apples here too. So since they are known for their pho, I am going to get number 11, pho thai, which is pho with filet mignon rare steak. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, how do you say thank you as a Vietnamese? <laughs> One of the reviews mentioned that their restaurants were immaculate, which is actually pretty rare for a pho restaurant. I'm gonna go check out the restroom. Oh, super clean and no funky smells. There's a sink here and there's a sink right outside the bathroom as well for people that just wanna wash their hands. Thank you, go go. Oh, piping hot. My hands are so cold, this feels so good. So everybody likes their pho a little bit different. I like mine with loads of basil, and everybody laughs at me for this, but I love making it really sour. So like one to two squeezes of lime is perfect. And then a hit of sriracha. One thing I noticed, the sriracha bottle is clean. Thank you. So these are spaghetti noodles with, it looks like barbecue beef, similar to something you would find in a banh mi. I would say this is not bad compared to Brodard. I almost like the noodles here a little bit more, the flavor. You definitely get more of like a garlic noodle taste over Brodard, but the meat I wish was a little bit better. And of course we have to try our spring rolls. They also have the crunchy thing in the middle and then the pork patty. It's good if you need a quick fix, but it doesn't come close to Rodard at all. You love it? Noodle boy like the noodles? Oh, yeah. Pho Saigon Pro was actually pretty good. Yeah, if I was at Spectrum and I wanted pho, I'd definitely go here again. So after going to all three of those Vietnamese restaurants, which one do you guys think was the best? For me, I thought Vox Kitchen was pretty good. The food was solid, the service was also excellent, but I wouldn't actually consider it a Vietnamese restaurant. Looking at their menu, it's kind of more of Asian fusion, but it's owned by Vietnamese people. I would say if we're going by that TikTok guy's theory, I'd have to go with Brodard. The food there is solid, it's authentically Vietnamese, and even though every restaurant had their own version of the beef, shaking beef garlic noodles, I would say Bro Dar's probably comes out closest to what my mom would make, like with heavy on the oyster sauce and the soy sauce and, you know, just their own interpretation of what a Americanized version of garlic noodles would taste like. But they also have other very authentically Vietnamese dishes like the nam nung gung, the pork spring rolls, and then the rice luna cakes, whereas the other ones were more like street foods or like Vietnamese fast food. 
Now, in terms of the theory, his theory mentions that a good Yelp review doesn't necessarily mean that the restaurant is good. It means that the restaurant is simply good at doing things that won't hurt their ratings. In the case of Vox Kitchen, I thought that place was solid and they deserve their stars, but they went the extra mile to refill my drink with a to-go cup so that I was satisfied upon leaving. Now that's going the extra mile. Anyways, comment below and let me know if you think this theory applies across the board to any type of cuisine or it's simply just like Asian food. Check out my last one where I review the worst rated restaurants in my town and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!